Hey, what's going on? I'm Isaac. I'm the uh, owner of Relentless Strength Training, if you don't know. Um, and today I'd like to just, uh, I've been kind of talking with some clients and kind of talking to people about like our general um, our general format, not necessarily what we always use at Relentless because we individualize um, programs for all of our clients. But like if I had to, people have asked me, like if I had to make like a like a general format for the best results for um, fitness for a simple, easy to follow plan that a person with a normal schedule who, you know, wants, you know, above average results. So wants to look great, feel great, be able to perform all that type of stuff, but maybe not to the level of like putting in the required work that like elite level performer would have to be, you know, somebody who's a normal normal person, a dad, a mom, you know, who wants to be able to have a lot of fun playing with their kids, wants to be able to, you know, take their shirt off the beach, so to speak, or want to, you know, wants to be able to like do more than average, but at the same time, you know, not like, again, be an active competitor where it becomes that huge focal point of your life. And so I wanted to build this little quick video and just kind of talk about what that would look like. And so that's what we're going to get into today. And that's where a lot of people struggle with um, getting or staying fit. And it's not because they, they lack the desire to do those things. You know, they, you know, you, I don't think that they're, that you're out there um, and you don't care because if you don't, if you didn't care, if you didn't want to be in shape, uh, quite frankly, you wouldn't be on the list. I'm going to send this to, um, you know, you just, it just wouldn't be an issue for you. It wouldn't be a thing. So that means that if you're not, getting the results you want to get, you know, it's not because you don't want it, but it's because there's confusion. Like there's just, you know, what plan do I follow? You know, all these, all these experts create these super complicated plans and they put them in magazines, they put them in books, uh, they put them on YouTube videos, they do all this stuff. And it's, it just seems like really complex. Um, or maybe they're just like, the plan may be fine, maybe a perfectly good plan, but it doesn't work for like a normal person's schedule. Like how often have we, how often have we seen that? Have we seen um, programs that are perfectly fine, but just like no normal person could follow them? Um, or, you know, you, maybe you keep getting sidetracked with injury, you know, like you do something, it works out good for a while and then you get hurt. Um, you know, I know I've been there myself as an athlete um, and that's been kind of always been a constant struggle. Um and then also just lack of results. Like you put in a bunch of work, you really try hard and then like nothing happens, you know, and that's super, super frustrating. So, you know, I kind of want to get into some basics to work um, with your body as opposed to trying to work against it. And what you need to realize is that, you know, we may live in this modern world that we're in now, um, but our genes, our genetics and everything are still, set up in caveman times. And so there's certain things that humans are designed or evolved to do um, or not do for that matter. And if you're trying to train counterintuitive to those, then it's going to be always a struggle. You're always battling uphill versus if you're working with the stuff that you're designed to do, which is not sitting in cars, sitting in desks, you know, playing on your phone all the time, things like that. Um, but figuring out ways to work with what you have to compensate for that, because that's real life, then, you know, you can really make a lot of tremendous results because you're now you're not fighting that battle. You're not fighting that friction. You're not fighting your body. You're working with it. So just some quick examples. Um, talk about, you know, a couple quick uh, clients here who've been through some of our shorter programs, our six-week programs. Um, you know, Matt, Matt here went down like 18 pounds in six weeks. He worked out basically three days a week. Um, I'll get into the, the program here in a little bit, but you know, Matt's a dude, he's a, he's a dad, he, uh, hardworking guy and, um, you know, made good results, made good progress. And he didn't have to live in the gym to do it. You know, on the other side of the, um, gender equation is Connie. Same thing. Like Connie went down six in six weeks. She got down uh, 13 and a half pounds. She took off three and a half inches off her waist. Um, you know, she worked 
focused in the gym. She put in the effort, but at the same time, she didn't live in the gym. She wasn't, um, she wasn't here every single day of the week. She wasn't, you know, killing herself outside the gym, stuff like that. She wasn't starving herself. Um, you know, she made great progress by doing the right things consistently. So what are those things? How do we do it? We've got three types of exercises that we're built for and that we're going to get into here. And one that we're not, which is a, I think most people tend to do more of. And I want you to keep in mind here, I'm building a simple structure that you can follow and, and do. Um, I'm giving you like the framework. I'm giving you the skeleton, so to speak. There's all kinds of ways we could dig deeper. We could come up with things that are slightly different. We could come up with things that are um, more optimal if you had unlimited time or unlimited resources and like all that type of stuff. Like, so for the exercise science geeks like me, um, you could make all kinds of different changes on this, but this is designed so that a normal person can have above average results and actually live and enjoy your life as opposed to having to become a gym rat, um, which is a lot of fun for people like me who own gyms and are gym rats. But if that's not you, I don't need you to become that to get better results. So how are we going to do it? We're going to start out with the strength training, right? Everybody talks about strength training. And strength training is the cornerstone um, of whatever your plan is. Because quite frankly, if you're stronger, you will be better. Um, you know, bone health, you know, capacity for overall work and being able to do things. You'll be able to run faster, jump higher. You'll retain muscle mass better. Uh, which will mean that you'll look better naked. You'll have more muscle mass. You'll have less fat. Your body will have a reason to stay strong. And stronger and healthier people, you know, are just generally going to look better. They're going to feel better. They're going to be able to do more things. And strength training is going to be the cornerstone for that. And so what I need you to think about, remember, is in caveman times, there were times where we had to really strain hard on picking up a heavy rock or log. We had to break a piece of wood. We had to, you know, wrestle an opponent. We had to, you know, whatever these things were, there were times carry a heavy thing of water. There were times where we had to work hard, um, but they weren't frequent. And so that's what strength training is really going to be about. Strength training and strength building can be weights, machines, body weight training, bands, kettlebells, barbells, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, yes, at Royal Unless we have certain ways we do it that I think are better than average. But that's, again, that's stuff that we can do to work with you directly versus whatever you prefer to do for strength training, as long as it's progressively challenging and it continues to build. Because remember, strength is an adaptation. So you need to challenge yourself and continue to build it. Um, as long as you do that, then whatever your call is, whatever your call is, whatever you prefer. Um but again, the frequency is not necessarily high. Two or three focused um, focused sessions a week. You know, I like three because I think that most people do better with a little more muscle on them, and also that you in our today's our in our today in our society today we don't move as much as we would have back in those caveman times, so to speak. So you know, you have a little more recovery ability to handle three training sessions a week. But honestly, if you were just trying to be healthy and fit twice a week, lifting uh, or straining or doing some sort of resistance training would be fine. If you don't know how to do any of that, then, you know, get a coach, um, help you work on the compound lifts, which are basically lifts that move more than one joint at a time. So these are your squats, your pushups, your deadlifts, your rows, your stuff like that versus your isolation lifts, like your curls and your arm extensions and stuff like that. Um, get a coach for the strength training if you don't know how to do it. Obviously, this is what we do at Relentless, so I'm going to go ahead and volunteer myself to happily coach you. Uh, but that's a good coach is going to be able to teach you to do it correctly and safely. You're not going to get hurt and also going to help you get more success out of that work. So the next one is your slow and steady training. Preferably walking. Humans are designed to walk a lot. Um, you know, like hunter-gatherers, hunting and gathering. Both involve a lot of walking. Um, it isn't necessarily hard walking, isn't necessarily fast walking, isn't necessarily running, isn't necessarily anything else. It's just moving. 
And in our current society today, that's one of the things we don't do much of. We do a lot of sitting. We do a lot of stuff like that, that, you know, our bodies are not designed to sit in contorted positions like chairs for a long time. Um, and now there's a certain part that that is just what it is. That's life. And I'm not dismissing that. But um, instead, walk as much as you can. Low intensity aerobic work is good for your overall health. It chews through calories. It reduces stress, aids recovery. It's good for your cardiovascular system, your heart, your lungs, your blood pressure, all the type of stuff. Uh, helps reduce your blood sugar. Uh, if you don't want to walk, then bike, you know, hike, get on a rower, do something. But do do some low intensity. You should be able to still hold a conversation while you do this type of aerobic work. Um, and do it as much as you can. And now for some of us, that might be a 10 minute walk every day, you know, or most days of the week on your lunch break or something like that. And that is, that is what it is. If you can get more in, do more. This is one of those that within normal human beings reason, more isn't going to hurt you. So the more you can get in, the better. The last one is the sprint or interval training. Okay. So this is like the spice to the meat and potatoes, strength training and low intensity aerobic work. Um, Sprint interval training is infrequent, once or twice a week. Don't do a lot of it, but humans are designed to sprint. They're designed to run after prey, run away from predators, uh, play games with each other, you know, really like air it out. But we don't do it very often. Uh, but it is what we are designed to be good at. So we lurk, we ru- we do a lot of walking and we do a little bit of sprinting. And now it doesn't need to be running. So if running beats you up, then don't run. Get on, uh, get on a bike. Get on a whatever and do some intervals where you go hard for, you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds and you go easy for a minute or two and repeat that a few times. And if you haven't done much of this in a while, start slow and carefully because this is people do get hurt doing this if they just, uh, you know, this is where the guys that play like beer league softball or rec basketball or something like that, where they've been uh, haven't done anything like for a year or years in some cases, and they jump into a basketball game and they end up hurting their hamstring or something like that. Cause they start sprinting for the first time. They didn't build into it. This is something you got to kind of build into a little bit. All right. What to avoid. Uh, we call this junk miles. So junk miles is that stuff that's in the middle. It's kind of that, like kind of hard and kind of long because remember, as I've just shown humans are really good at doing like, high intensity, very brief stuff, or very low intensity, long duration stuff. The stuff that's in the middle, all it does is it beats you up and it doesn't create much change. It plat- You plateau over easy because it's too hard to be restorative and it's too easy to create lasting change. So all it does is you kind of live in that no man's zone. You, you end up breaking all the time. These are the people that say, I'm just going to go for a run after my lifting. Um, And all they end up doing is they go for this like medium hard run after they've already done a lifting session. And then after a few weeks of that, lo and behold, they lose a bunch of muscle mass, um, their shins hurt, and they don't feel like they're making any progress anymore because they're not. Um, This is where you see like high level runners, like really high competitive runners, um, push the envelope all the time and they don't get hurt very often running. I mean, you know, they always have like little aches and pains because they're high level athletes, but you know, they don't like, these are like the high level marathon runners, stuff like that. They don't get hurt like normal runners, amateur runners. You go to like a local 5k, they're always beat up. They're always smashed up. Um, And yet they only do 10%, maybe 20% of the mileage these high level runners do. Why? Because the high level runners know how to avoid doing that middle of the ground. Like, you know, I'm going to go out and run my hardest three miles three days a week, four days a week, five days a week. They don't do any of that. They run really, really hard for brief periods of time. They do a lot of really slow sub-maximal mileage. And that's how they avoid getting hurt. Um, If you're injured a lot when you're training, if you're feeling burnt out, if you're plateaued, you're not making any progress, then chances are you're doing too much junk mile stuff. Now it could be lifting the same thing. Uh, Lifting where you're lifting kind of hard, but you're not really continuing to progress. You're not doing anything hard enough to progress. You know, all you're doing is beating yourself up. And if you're injured and burnt out all the time, you can't be making progress. That's not a win. So you got to be a little smarter with your training to be a little more consistent. So putting it all together, strength training progressively two or three times a week. 
do lots of low intensity movement, daily walking, hiking, biking, stuff like that. And do your interval training once or twice a week. This could be sprints. This could be intervals on a bike or a rower or elliptical machine. Um, or even better, it could be playing a game like rec basketball or, you know, ultimate Frisbee or tag with your kids or, you know, whatever it is you like to do. But some sort of interval um, training like that, just make sure you kind of build into it. But avoid sitting in the middle. That's where your progress stalls and you get ground up. You just get beat up uh, by kind of going going too hard to be easy, but going too easy to be hard, that type of stuff. So just kind of like avoid sitting in that middle ground. And the next levels from here, where you'd be going from that to make even more changes, you'd be digging into your setting up simple nutrition habits and building a clear mental focus and direction to make sure that the training happens and make sure that things are uh, moving in the right direction. And that's something that I certainly am willing to help with. So reach out if um, you need some help with that. But the bottom line is I hope this was helpful for you. I hope this was productive. And I hope this gives you a framework of what you need to be looking at when you're building your exercise program to see great results and at the same time be able to do it and live a normal, happy, healthy lifestyle versus having to become a slave to the gym and a slave to all things of your fitness.